Hey, County Manager's Report, Mr. Pritchard. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, I'd like to ask Chad McLeod to come to the podium and give you a brief overview of the ABM Industries presentation and introduce our guest. Chad? Yes, sir. Staff is continually looking for ways to save on facility energy costs as well as to help out with facility maintenance costs. Our goal is to enhance building performance and reduce utility and operating costs. Over the past several years, staff has met with several businesses uh, to help out with these plans, but we never were fully interested in what was offered uh, until we ran across ABM, who was introduced to us through Lowndes County Schools. Uh, uh, they've already done a preliminary walkthrough through five of our buildings and offered up uh, some solutions in, with that preliminary walkthrough. <clears throat> and what they do is they find solutions for our buildings and funding sources for those uh, costs. And the money is paid back through the energy cost savings. Uh, in this business model, they also guarantee the savings, so they would write a check for the difference if we did not meet the savings. If this, is, if this solution is something you are interested in, we would put out an RFQ packet to allow ABM and other companies to allow to uh, put in for this project. Uh, and at this time, I'm going to introduce Jason Anderson with ABM, and he will take you through the presentation. Hey, thank you, Commissioners, uh, for your time. Also with me is Ray Jordan. Uh, Ray is from Ashburn, Georgia, Turner County, retired superintendent, been with us about four years now. He also led uh, Lowndes County School System through the project that we're in construction now. Um, this is information is for you all, so please stop me. My background is financial. I ran a community bank in Georgia for 15 years, okay, and worked with a lot of county governments, and that's my finance is kind of my background. I'm not an engineer, um, but we have a lot on our staff, so if I, don't have, I can't, if I don't have all your questions, I can get that for you. Chad did a really good job of giving you kind of a synopsis of what we're going to discuss. Um, I have a presentation for you. I'm not going to read it word for word, or it's, it's your resource, but I do want to hit some high points uh, for you. As on the first page of our slide, this is really about a financial solution for the critical needs of our clients. Um, it's going to impact your facilities, but it's definitely financial. So <clears throat> kind of what we've done so far, we have had multiple me meetings with your leadership, um, with, with your staff over the last three to four months. Uh, as Chad talked about, we did a feasibility study uh, that consists of looking at your five largest buildings. Um, looking at um, 12 months of your utility consumption and spend. And utilities is electric, water, gas, sewer. Uh, bringing our top engineers down and walking high level um, through your buildings to see maybe what, what, what opportunities exist. Um, and so, you know, all over Georgia, we do we work with county governments and school systems, and so we have benchmarks that we know once we um, do some improvements to facilities, we understand what impact can be made, so we get able tables us to look at the feasibility study to see what opportunity is there. And so uh, today I want to share with you some of those findings, um, some of the little about ABM and, and our proven solutions, and talk about next step and get your questions. You know, you think about it, and this has been true through my discussions from, you know, Robin to uh, whether it be the captain out at the sheriff's department or Chad or, or your county manager, is that each year the challenge is, is when you go through the budget process, is how do we use our funding? Do we use it to expand services in the community in a way it, you know, it demands? Or do we use our funding to support the facilities that provide those services? Lots of times it's a tug of war. Um, you know, it's a give and take. And usually, more than not, the facilities, you know, the heat in there, roofs, those type of things that need to be maintained kind of get put on the back burner and, and get deferred. And so um, for years, it, your facilities have been cost centers. They cost you capital to, to improvements. And this is what we're talking about today is a paradigm shift. It's a different way of looking at things. We're talking about using your buildings as a funding source for their own needs. And we'll talk about a little bit of that later. Um, this is an important um, study. Uh, NACO, the National Association of Counties, um, your association, back in 2012, did a study on how counties use energy and is there any waste streams that may can be, you know, uh, improved on. And here's what they found, the highlights of this study, is that first, counties cannot properly manage their energy consumption 
without first measuring their energy use. Okay, that makes sense. You can't impact something you don't measure. Also, they took 63 counties, United States wide, small, medium, large. They looked at buildings all counties have in common, um, like annexes, judicial centers, um, courthouses, jails, and almost half, 48% of all the facilities in the study were using twice the energy consumption that the uh, average building the same size uh, in the private sector was using. And the study concluded that there was at least a 15 to 25 percent opportunity to decrease that consumption in utility spend. So just briefly, um, some things that, that, that Lowndes County has told us through the last couple of months from different areas. One thing has been clear is the goal is, is they want a comprehensive strategic plan, something that gives the data that allows leadership, staff, and commissioners to make good decisions now and down the road when it comes to your facilities. If you think about Lowndes, one thing that's been very clear to me is, is that it's a growing community. It's a growing town. Um, Y'all are constantly looking at new buildings, acquisitions, renovations, and it just never ends. And so uh, having a good uh, comprehensive project for your existing buildings is pretty important, but not just a, a, a plan, but a funding source, a funding solution, and then a company that can come in and help implement that plan and be a partner for that plan. That's been clear is what I've heard at every level from Robin to Chad um, to the county manager. A um, couple of things you can read is, you know, um, you know, look at the courthouse, uh, possible require other facilities. Um, when I was at the uh, jail, uh, even on the newer pods, HVAC is, is starting to fail there. Um, always here, general fund uh, relief is important. And then the biggest last point is that the program must be self-funded. That means budget neutral and require no upfront capital. Again, there goes the funding piece that we're talking about. I'm not going to read um, all this, but through our preliminary observations, the way that we impact savings and provide new funding that you don't have access to now is finding waste streams in your facilities, um, usually through LED lighting. Uh, there's opportunities there. Um, through build an envelope. And build an envelope, we do a, a geothermal imaging of your facilities to see where you're losing energy, whether it be through doorways, whether it be through space, you know, between the roof and, and, and the ceiling, anywhere you can, you know, where weather stripping or insulation can prevent the building from losing energy. We look at water opportunities, especially in the jail. Um, you, you know, jail's 24-7 facility uses a lot of water. We look at ways to decrease that. We look at transformer replacements and building automation, which is um, your heat and con your controls. You know, use Siemens uh, now, and so we would work with them to look at ways to, uh, you know, controls and lighting it for, for you all who maybe don't work in the space is technology. So just like your iPhone or your phone that you have increases every year, technology and lighting and, and automation increases every year that can drive opportunities. So we look, these are just a few areas that we look at when we're looking to drive savings um, for our clients. The, the buildings we looked at, um, these five here, um, this kind of obviously the building we're in now is, you know, is, a, is, a, is you know, is, even though it's, it's one of the newer buildings, it's still getting close to 10 years old, um, very well built. Um, uh, not a whole lot of, you know, uh, of any mechanical needs to be replaced, but maybe some ways that can be improved for efficiencies. <laughs> Now your courthouse, your, your 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 tax office, your human resources office, law enforcement complex, there are opportunities there um, with older equipment that at some point is going to have to be replaced um, through our preliminary observations. Again, this slide is for you all, um, you know, to read on your own. I'm not going to go through everything with you. It's just from our engineer's standpoint of things that he sees and maybe some opportunities to impact um, those areas. And these right here are pictures uh, through the five buildings. Um, each building kind of shows areas that we can impact. If you look at the, um, I guess we y'all's top left, you see the front doors to, the, to, the, to this center. As you can see light coming through the front in between those. Those are areas for, for opportunity of, 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 you know, build an envelope. Uh, the different light um, fixtures, T8 lighting is, uh, is an older lighting. I and mean, it was new when you, when you put it in, obviously, but lighting uh, technology increased. 
uh, different controls opportunity. Um, the one picture in the top middle is where your IT uh, office is, and this is where it gets really hot in there. You, you, obviously, I keep IT equipment really cool, and so there's film opportunity, there's ways, there's, there's different type of wind addressing opportunities that can decrease uh, the sunlight coming in there, that can help decrease the consumption of energy. I'm just sharing those with you because energy and operational waste is death by a thousand slices. So it just doesn't happen all at one place. It's different places. Again, um, this is your HR building, just kind of showing some older controls. Um, as you first walk into the building, you know it's you know definitely you know the way the the four four year goes way high. Uh, different lighting opportunities, uh, different opportunities from from transformers and then older equipment on your rooftop units, as you can see in that top middle picture. Law enforcement, we impact, you, know, you think about your jail 24-7, um, you know, there's a lot of opportunity for, for, for savings uh, there. Uh, and not just from, you know, lighting and building an envelope, but also in the kitchen area, we, we impact savings. A laundry area, we impact savings. So lots of ways. That, um, normally, just so you all know, um, on jails, we average normally about 45 to 50 percent reduction in utilities. Um, in county governments, overall, it's about 35 percent is what we average. Again, courthouse, as you know, there's a lot of work to be done there. Um, windows there um, is one thing that we identified as a as an opportunity. They're single pane, and again, um, you can put all the best technology in the world into a building, but if it doesn't keep, if it doesn't hold it, it's not going to help it. And the tax office. Um, tax office, I think you've got some roof issues there from our preliminary observation. Um, one thing, too, is, guys, we don't come in and just replace like for like, okay, equipment-wise. Our engineers, they look at how you're using the building today, the way it should be functioning, talking to your staff, and making sure that, that, that the system that goes back in there um, is not only energy efficient but also um, fits the needs. A lot of times we see where buildings have been renovated, and they've been used differently, and zoning of the heat and air is not proper, and one room's hot, one room's cold, and those type of things. So, a little bit about ABM, how do we help? Again, talk about before, you know, that struggle. Do we use, you know, our, our your capital to, you know, improve parks and recs, improve roads and bridges, law enforcement, all the things that, you know, that, that our community demands, or do we use it for our facilities? And a lot of times, that creates a gap. Of funding and, and our program helps close that gap. How do we do it? Um, we've been talking a lot about energy, but uh, there's actually seven more categories that when it comes to funding your facilities. And so what we do is we don't look at first time cost. We look at ownership life cycle cost of owning a building. Um, and we look at all the areas that it takes to own a building from energy, in-house staff, contracted services, major repairs, and so on. And we look at ways that we can reduce the cost of, of, of long-term ownership. By reducing that cost in your, your current budget, that creates funding um, for improving your own facility. So I talked about earlier about a paradigm shift of going from your facilities being call centers to a funding source. That's what I mean. It's by looking at ways that you run your facilities now um, and be able to reduce that cost to help produce um, funding. Another thing that we do um, that's really huge, we'll talk about next steps in a second. Uh, Chad already talked about putting out an RFQ. Well, if you did and we were selected, we'd come in and do an investment grade audit. And this audit would probably take about four months. I mean, we do a deep dive in all your facilities, every building that you have, and look at ways to make impact and create funding for you that you don't have now. But one thing that I love that we do is called a capital volatility analysis, okay? We're gonna survey every piece of equipment in every building. We're gonna look at the model number, the serial number, but we'll look at the age of the equipment, but also the condition of the equipment, okay? And we're going to better come back with data on each building. So you're going to know, you know, the total amount of, um, you know, uh, assets that you have from a mechanical standpoint, where each one of them are from a useful life standpoint. You're going to know from a planning standpoint each year how much funding you need for a place. Okay, so it's going to give you the data, your team the data, to make good decisions. Um, I just did a program for Newton County government up in Covington, Georgia, and um, they had a library. Now they had a library authority, but the county funded about 90% of the library budget. And they had a, catast a catastrophic event uh, at their library on their heat and air. Meaning that the whole, that all the units went down at one time. 
It was $1.2 million to replace. Um, that situation became a political football because, you know, the, the county really didn't have the funding to, to do it. Um, the library didn't have it. If you know anything about a library, you got to keep those books. My wife's a media specialist in school, but she had to keep those books, you know, cool. And anyway, long story short, um, the political football, the library ended up winning that, that game, and the um, county had to get a loan of 800000 to put that $1.2 million project. But one of the commissioners asked a great question. You know, out of our other 58 buildings, where's the next landmine that's going to go off like this? And so that's kind of how we entered a picture. And so went through our audit, we were able to identify by building, um, you know, where maybe they had capital volatility. And what we know about this, being on the board, is, is and I used to serve on the school board years ago in my hometown, so I've been on your side, but on the school side, is that nobody likes surprises because when you work hard to plan a budget, last thing you want is a surprise when it comes to your, your facilities. And so our program helps identify that and helps you um, make good decisions. Any questions so far on this? Okay. I want to answer your question, but I also want to respect your time. And so our program and, and what we do is, is we help our clients get a 15-year a capital lease. Okay, The lease is on the equipment. You own it at the end of the lease. It's just a way that, that a law allows you in the state to, to do energy performing contracting. And so with our program, um, we basically um, would help you get that lease. Um, during construction, you don't pay any money up front. That's, that's the big part, part of it. During construction, you don't pay any. At the end of construction, your first lease payment is a year from there. And what we're guaranteeing that Chad talked about is, is that the reallocated savings that we find in your existing budget through energy, operation, all those different eight areas talked about will pay for that lease payment, including the interest. Okay. Now, obviously, sometimes there's more needs than there is savings, and that's where we'd work with your team, Rob and her team, Chad, county manager, in prioritizing where you want to use your reallocated savings. So, so you, right now, you're already on a 15-year program. Okay? It's whatever you're spending in energy right now, consuming in energy, you know, over 15 years plus the escalation of utility prices and also operational cost, all right, plus everything that um, in your facility that's going to fail at, in the end of life at some point, you're going to replace too, okay? What we're talking about is, is so if you look at what you're spending in energy, which is about $2 million a year, okay, and you look at it over 15 years, and you look at the average escalation you all have experienced the last 15 years, and you put that with it, you're looking at about $37, $38 million dollars in energy that's if you don't add any more facilities okay over the next 15 years from our benchmarks we believe we could lower that down to around 25 million so that gives you opportunity of savings to reinvest back in your buildings that's where those builders become a funding source for their own needs so that's the opportunity that we're that we're talking about that we believe that exists um again um based on that and our and our average Guarantee our average reduction in utilities is around 35%. It's actually a little bit more, but conservatively at 35%. For you all, that means about 600000 in savings just in energy alone. And then through the audit, we could identify other savings in the other areas of your budget um, that could help fund um, the construction. And so you take those savings, you multiply it by 15 year, you, you know, reduce the interest out of it, and for example, just on energy alone, there's about $7 million worth of funding that y'all have access to without raising any taxes, without increasing your budget whatsoever, without any new revenue streams, just by your buildings functioning differently um, and being more efficient. So this is a, probably the most important slide. Potential benefits of Lowell's County. If you look at the left side um, graph um, and the right side, they're, they're the same height. The difference is, is that you're reducing some of your cost in your budget to 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 give you opportunity to do other things, and so we feel like there's over six hundred thousand in energy savings annually that we can impact, uh, which would produce a conservative program of about seven million dollars. This would increase cash flow and flexibility because everything that we replace for you, all those old rooftop units, replacing roofs, all the different things is capital avoidance that you won't have to spend, this board won't have to spend. You're going to use money you're already spending now, just reallocating those funds somewhere else. Um, and the part I really like about it, it increases capital outlay with plan replacement. This is a proactive solution that gets you ahead. What we know is for every dollar you defer, 
and uh, replacing equipment is past its useful life, but not at its end of life, costs you four dollars later. You think about it: a heat and air unit that's, that's past its useful life, let's say in this area, is 15 years. Um, it may still run, but at a premium on energy and operational maintenance. Um, program allows payment to be made with SPLOS. Well, most of our clients, um, I just did a uh, Cockwood County government. We were in phase two there. We did a phase one four years ago, impacted all 58 buildings uh, there. Um, because the way their SPLOS is written, uh, the, the, the yearly lease payment is, is designed to be made out of your general fund through our savings, so our guarantee. Because if we miss it, we got to write you a check. However, well, the way most SPLOS are written, because it is facility upgrades, you can use SPLOS sometimes to make your lease payment each year, and that gives you general fund relief. So I think in Cockwick County government, we save them almost 450000 a year for our guarantee. So each year, if they have SPLOS available, they'll use it to make their lease payment. That gives them $450,000 of general fund reduction. So again, those are just potential benefits. It may not, every county is different. I'm just telling you what we've experienced. Also, what I love about this is our program allows opportunity to include funding and oversight of renovation projects such as a courthouse or any other building. So um, if there's, you know, if there's buildings, that, now we don't build any new buildings, but if it, we, we do renovate and we do additions, okay? And so it's a funding source. The lease is a funding source. Uh, also, we project manage everything that we do. Again, who is ABM? Um, I, I put this slide in here not to talk about how big we are, but talk about the resources we have. ABM is almost almost a six billion dollar company. Um, we have almost uh, two hundred thousand employees, um, one hundred forty, but that's that's just that doesn't count our franchisees. So almost two hundred thousand employees. We impact facilities. Uh, I'm me and Ray are on the energy side, but we also we do janitorial, we do parking solutions, security solutions. If you go to Atlanta Airport, we run it. Got about 5,000 employees there from parking ride service to gas in the planes to pushing people in wheelchairs to maintaining the restroom. So we have a lot of um, a lot of resources that we bring our clients uh, besides just our energy. Now, that doesn't mean that every client uses these services, but what it does mean is if you have a question or if there's a need there, we have the resources to bring to you. Who we are in Georgia um, we have over 7,600 employees in Georgia. Something to know in Ray and I's office, uh, the COO for the entire company office is in our office. Uh, the uh, headquarters for the Energy Solutions Division for the entire global company is headquartered in Georgia. Okay, so we have the best resources at our uh, back door. Again, just kind of recap, we save over 35, average and 35 percent in Georgia savings. <clears throat> For you all, that means maybe exceeding seven million dollars in funding possibilities. It's cash flow, neutral opportunity, no new taxes, and it reduces capital risk almost by 50 percent. So, what are the next steps? And again, this is a projected timeline, but I want you to understand that this is a long process. Uh, not a, you know, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. We've completed basically the concept and the, and then the feasibility piece. So basically, is there goal alignment with the county um, and, and ABM and what we do? <clears throat> there's a lot of evidence to indicate that. Is it, through the feasibility findings, there's strong evidence that there's a great project for y'all to be had. The next part, as Chad talked about, would be posting the RFQ for qualifications and allowing the competitive process to begin. Um, if we were selected, um, then you would enter into a letter of intent, and then we would start the uh, final engineering and solution study um, sometime in January, if you kept this timeline. Uh, that process would take probably about four to five months through the audit and also getting back with your team and doing a co-authored program, and then you can read the other dates. We would be looking, you know, probably talking, on, if you stay this timeline, the earliest, you're talking about probably sometime in August. Um, and our team, what we do is, this is all we do, county governments and school systems. And so we, you know, we come in and we usually take over a, a whole hotel, you know, in, in your town. We use as many local subs as we can. I think on the, on the Cockwick County government project, it was like $7 million, and I think $3.5 million went back to, to, to local, uh, which is, which is cause we understand the, the importance of that. Now, some work we do ourselves because we're guaranteeing the savings. Um, Y'all have a really unique advantage. Is we have so many references around you all right now. 
uh, from your school system here in Lowndes County, Brooks County Schools, your neighbor county, we're um, in the final stages of, of construction there. Uh, Cockwood County Government, Cockwood County Schools, uh, Berrien County Schools, Turner County Schools, uh, Turner County Government, which is closed, we're in the construction there. Um, so y'all have a lot of uh, good references um, in those areas. Any questions um, for me or Ray? Ray, anything else you want to add to it? I, I just say that the reason I, I got into this was because I was a satisfied customer. Uh, we did this with this company in, uh, in Turner County Schools. And not nearly the, the, the bad size that we're talking here with numbers. But, uh, we did $2.2 million worth of improvements and were guaranteed $258,000 a year in, in savings. Uh, the, their last audit. Their audited savings were three hundred and sixty-eight thousand dollars. So they exceeded their guarantee uh, and improved all of their facilities in, in the process. So uh, the reason I, I started looking for employment when I retired after thirty-four years in education, I wanted to work with somebody that was quality. And uh, my experience with ABM, both as, both as a customer and as a uh, as an employee, has been excellent. So we'd love to help you. Do more with what you're using now, and isn't that isn't that the mantra of local government? Do do more with what you got. So uh, we'd love to help you do that if, if at all possible. Commissioners, any questions? I, I have one, um, um, Mr. Chairman. Um, how, how many facilities were we looking at within the county government here, of being evaluated or actually programming acted on? So during the just the feasibility study. Dr. Marshall, we uh, just took the five largest buildings. Um, if if y'all if it was a pleasure to board and leadership, and y'all follow this process, and we were coming to do the audit, we would audit every building that the um, county operates or owns. Okay, that you maintain to look for opportunities, um, because again, what we're trying to do is find as much saving short midterm that that gives you all funding uh, for your bigger projects that you need help with. Um, we would come back with that information, and then we would co-author with your leadership and staff what the program looks like and then bring those findings uh, back to the commission. So I don't know how many buildings total. We have approximately have. 54 buildings. Uh, I believe that's about correct. And then we'll, oh, there's also other uh, opportunities, possibly with some of the utilities items they have, as well as uh, towers and sites such, such, as, such as that. So... It would be everything we own. Yeah, and just to clarify, Dr. Marshall, during the walkthrough, we physically looked at five facilities, yeah. but I believe we had data on more than that. For yeah, we did. For the we had the energy data. Yeah. But we got your power bills and your square footage on all of your buildings. That's where the, 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 the number of annual savings comes from, taking your, your full inventory of facilities down to the square footage cost that we believe we can achieve. So these numbers in, in impact your whole facility when we physically look at the five markets. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, how, many re how many reimbursement checks have you written? We have written one um, in the last 10 years. It was the Green County government. Um, we have a lot of, like, like y'all have checks and balances in the government. We have checks and balances in what we do. So when we do an audit, we have a project developer that develops the, the, the audits where you are now, develops, a, develops the ways to drive the savings. And then we have an energy team that assigns the savings, starts our checks and balances. And so, you know, if if they can't measure the savings through dialoguers or just through, you know, doing understanding lighting surveys and understanding what the lighting differences and wattages is, then they're not going to guarantee the savings, okay? So... Also, if they can if they can measure a dollar in savings, they're probably going to guarantee ninety cents of that dollar. Okay, you still get a full dollar. That's what Ray's talking about in Turner County Schools. Their guarantee was like two hundred fifty something thousand, uh, but their real savings was over three hundred thousand because they got to keep keep all that. So um, we're good at what we do. We will write a check if the savings is not there. Um, but most of all of our programs, I know the uh, school systems at Cockwood, I just did there. We did there. Um, their audit um, just recently, um, and it was almost 300000 more than the savings. The savings were almost a million, and they exceeded it by almost 300000 um, So um, we don't write a whole lot of checks because 
we make sure the savings is there. Um, you know, four o'clock. And we're we're a very conservative company. We're 100 replicable in Georgia, and we've done that by you know not over promising and under delivering, but by making sure that we hit our numbers. That's a good question. Okay. Any other questions? 